Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alana Brown. That is Eric Restrepo. And we are here from Neighbors Group and Solo401k.com. Today, we'll be doing our second part of our real estate um, series. So very exciting. If you could do us a favor, let us know over here. Can you hear us? Can you see us? During the presentation, if you have any questions, go ahead and post them down there. And like always, while we're waiting for people to log in, let us know if you could hear us and see us. We'll talk about the three ways to get support. We have our network. Our network is a great place to connect with like-minded investors to post any questions, and of course, to find our past webinars. So check it out there. Then our website, solo401k.com. Um, that's where you can find all kinds of great information about the Solo 401k and calculators and all other great resources. And then of course, our knowledge base, which is support.solo401k.com. You get step-by-step -step guides if you need a good CPA. Pretty much type in any keyword and you'll get a great resource from us. Okay, it looks like people can see us. We're looking good. They can hear us. So <laughs> let's jump in. Let's do it. So perfect. This is um, this is part two of our two part series on investing your retirement funds in real estate. Very exciting topic. First of all, we also always have our disclaimer. So this is not going to be any tax advice this is not going to be legal advice. This is just education. A little bit about us. Uh, we're a neighbors group. We've launched the IRA LLC back in 2003 and the solo 401k in 2006. We have had consistent IRS document approval for the last 15 years. And um, you know, everybody here actually has a solo 401k, so, or a checkbook control plan. So we're all really familiar with how these structures work. We've all used them. So any questions you guys have, we've probably gone through anything uh, before you. So we also work directly with the IRS and the Department of Labor to ensure all of our documents are updated and compliant. Um, there's a big document update coming right now. So we're working on that right now, making sure that everybody is update and, and compliant with the IRS rules. So again, we're gonna talk about real estate and your retirement funds. It's a really interesting topic. People really do like real estate as an investment just in general, but especially in your retirement account, it is a tangible asset, right? So it's a hard asset. It does produce that cash flow or that yield. Um, it is an appreciating asset, definitely. And in these times when we have a lot of money printing going on, it's also a great hedge against potential inflation. So we're gonna be talking about, you know, what makes it possible to invest your, your retirement funds into real estate you know, how can you actually do it? We've talked about a few other few structures. We're going to talk about a few more today and also um, probably brush on, you know, again, just things to watch out for prohibited transactions, uh, those kinds of things, just things to keep in mind when you're doing real estate inside of your solo 401k. So um, just really to, to kind of recap what we talked about last time, uh, we're going to touch on the idea of self-custody or, or, you know, checkbook control. I think most of us have been trained to think about a 401k plan and associate that with some kind of a financial institution, right? Like Schwab or Morgan Stanley, TD Ameritrade, Fidelity. And certainly these, these institutions, uh, you know, do offer 401k plans, right? But we're going to get, we're going to talk about a little bit how that, that separation can happen where you can, you can have, really full control, checkbook control over your retirement funds, have your own 401k plan, um, and also be able to hold all kinds of alternative assets like real estate. So that really is, you know, the idea. It's, it's self-custody 
we'll cover any questions that you guys have, of course. Uh, go ahead and like Alana said, put them in the chat box. Also, if you have any really specific things to your situation, feel free to book a consultation with us. We're happy to go through your, your individual needs, your individual questions, um, and find out you know how, what situation or what, what account type might be the best fit for you. So this is really, and I, a picture really does tell a thousand words. So um, this is the idea of self-custody or checkbook control is you got you, you have your solo 401k plan documents. Sometimes those are all wrapped up with one custodian, but in this case, your plan documents are with us, with Neighbors Group. We're the IRS plan document provider. And then with our plan, you actually are your own custodian. So that's what gives you that checkbook control. Obviously, you do need to have somewhere to put your funds. So usually people set up like a trust bank account. Um, that, that, from that bank account, you have full checkbook control. You can write checks. You can wire funds to the closing table. And that's what allows you to actually take title to real estate and invest in a lot of the different options that we're going to talk about today. So really simply, it's pretty straightforward how to establish an account with us. You know, you fill out our online application. Our team helps you set up everything. We get you your documents. You set up that new bank account. You fund that account through either rollovers or new contributions or both. Then you get to choose your deals. We're going to talk about a lot of different deal structures that you can think uh, choose from today. Um, and then obviously from there, just make your investments, right? So it's a pretty straightforward process. Again, um, you know, in our first part of our series here, we talked about direct ownership, right? So go back. If you guys didn't see that part one of this series, it was really good. We talked about direct ownership in rental properties. We also talked about when you want to purchase a rental property with debt or with leverage, right? Um, some different considerations when you think about that, right? And typically those are larger deal sizes, potentially maybe a hundred thousand, a couple hundred thousand if you're going to purchase direct rental properties. Um, you know, also we talked a little bit about taking a participant loan out of your solo 401k to invest in direct real estate. So a lot of interesting topics we explored there on the last webinar. So go back and watch that one. If you guys haven't watched it yet, it is available, like Alana said on our network. So if you're not on that, definitely join solo 401k.net. It's our private social network just for, uh, prospects and also clients of solo 401k.com. Um, so hop on there. There are all kinds of great webinars, uh, past webinars, you know, touching on all kinds of different topics. But today we're going to talk more specifically about real estate funds, syndications, REITs, crowdfunding, also mortgage notes. And we're also going to touch on farmland. Great. Thanks, Eric. That was wonderful. So now let's jump into talking about some real estate funds, such as syndications, REITs, and crowdfunding. So with the syndication, you know, this is a larger property. It's when an investor sponsor will raise capital and then they'll have people become a limited partner. So what this typically means is that several investors will purchase memberships in an LLC then that LLC will get a loan to purchase this property. These deals might be large apartment complexes, so worth millions of dollars, where a single investor may not you know, have the funds or just may not want to you know, take on all that responsibility themselves. So there are two parties involved in a syndication. We have the general partner and the limited partner. So the general partner puts the deal together, raises the capital, secures any remaining financing, hires and manages the rehab team, and maybe eventually sells the property. So they're, you know, the active participant. They are doing all the work. So then there's the limited partner. That's going to be your solo 401k. It's the passive investors. So the LP, the limited partner's role, is to be the investor. And remember, the general partner, they're doing all of the work. They are going to make this deal profitable. In putting together a syndication, the general partner will, um, you know, look at certain things. What's going to have the best returns? Maybe there's an apartment complex where the rent is undervalued. So they fix up that apartment complex. They raise the rent. 
Some syndicators hold the property for cash flow. Others have an exit strategy, sometimes between three and five years. Let's look at an example. So we have Rama is raising capital for his apartment syndication. His friend Aziz has a solo 401k and wants to invest in Rama's deal. The investment amount is $100,000. The investment amount, $100,000. They're looking to raise $1.5 million, needs 15 investors at that $100,000. The total funding is going to be $3.5 million. So they're going to get a loan and that's going to include the purchase and the rehab for the property. As the solo 401k trustee, Aziz completes the subscription documents for the syndication using his trust name, Kapoor Investments Trust. So remember his solo 401k is in the, the investor. And Aziz gets assigned for everything because he is the trustee. So all Aziz has to do is wire the funds from you know, his trust checking account to the investment deal. You know, if he's getting distributions paid out, it's gonna go back into his trust checking account. Let's say the syndication has an exit and the apartment complex is sold for a profit, it's gonna go back into the trust checking account as well. So remember, everything's flowing in and out of your trust checking account. I know we talk about this a lot with all kinds of investments. It's really important to do it correct. You're not mixing any personal funds into the deal. You're also not taking any of the profits to you personally. What's so great about this? No capital gains on the profits from the sale. That's why it's going back into your trust checking account. Also, there's no 1031 exchange needed because those profits are going back into your 401k. It's all tax deferred. Also, there is no UDFI on leverage because you are using the solo 401k. If you're using a self-directed IRA, you are gonna have this UDFI. Um, don't let it deter you from a deal. Yeah, you might be paying a little bit of extra taxes, but it's still a great way to use retirement funds. some best practices for syndications. So if you're the general partner on a syndication, your solo 401k is not allowed to invest as a limited partner. We like to say this a lot. You know, if you personally are in a deal, your solo 401k is not. However, the solo yours, your solo 401k can be the limited partner on another person's deal, just not your own. Also, your solo 401k cannot be a general partner on a deal. If you're a general partner, this is active. Remember, we're keeping all of our investments in our solo passive. Okay, and now for REITs. A REIT is a real estate investment trust. So this is when a company purchases, owns and operates income producing properties. So it can be made up of multiple types of properties. You know, with a syndication, typically it's one property. You know, it's an expensive property. It's an apartment complex. Um, but for a REIT, it could have multiple apartment complexes within that REIT. Maybe it has a bundle of hospitals, single family homes, hotels, senior, senior living facilities. Some REITs have a specialty focus, such as student housing or maybe holding tax auction properties. So all different kinds of REITs out there. So a few types, we have the equity income REITs. So these typically buy and hold income producing assets. So that's the rent coming in. Then there's mortgage debt growth REITs. So these typically hold the mortgages on the properties. And then there's hybrid REITs. So it has a combination. Denise has a solo 401k and has identified a REIT made up of tax auction properties. Their returns look good and Denise decides to invest, which means her solo 401k will be a shareholder in the corporation who created the REIT. The buy-in is only $25,000. So Denise feels comfortable with the risk versus the reward on this investment. 
Denise's solo 401k is called DBT Trust. So she completes the subscription agreement with all of her information there. She is the trustee. DBT Trust is the investor. Remember, we're always using the tax ID number for your trust name. It's very important that you're filling out these forms correctly. So Denise signs the subscription agreement for the REIT because she is the plan trustee. When Denise is ready to invest, just like in the syndication and all your other investments, you're gonna wire your funds from your trust checking account to the deal. Let's say she's getting those distributions. They're going back into the trust checking account. This is avoiding any taxable distribution. REITs and syndications are very similar. You know, someone else is doing that work. And that's what's so great. Um, anyone here that has a solo 401k, you're a small business owner. You're very, very busy. So something like this doesn't take so much effort. You know, you are the money guy. You get to capture the, the rewards of OPE, which is other people's efforts. So this is perfect for Denise. Denise plays a completely passive role and she just gets to sit back and collect those dividends, you know, any of those profits. So it's important when you're looking at, you know, REITs and syndications, what's best for you? You know, typically with REITs, it's more investors. You'll see a lot of REITs on the stock exchange. It's um, easier to find. With syndications, you're probably looking around a little more, you know, um, it's not a public option. So there is more work to be done there. Um, and also what's different with a REIT, you're actually um, investing in shares. Whereas a syndication, you're actually a part of the property. So, you know, when deciding what's best for you, look into these different things. With syndications, you might be locked into a deal for a while. With REITs, you may be able to get out when you want. So do your research. Um, these are some great things to get involved in with your solo 401k. Awesome. Yeah, now we're going to talk a little bit about investing in crowdfunding. Um, crowdfunding is where, you know, deal sponsors can invest capital from multiple people. Um, these people typically don't know each other. They may be investors from various backgrounds. And often the funding comes through a central portal, right? So maybe you guys have seen these platforms that have popped up. Sometimes they are structured as REIT. Um, I saw a question come in about accredited investor status. We'll talk a little bit about that as well. Um, but crowdfunding has definitely been, been a very popular uh, way to invest in real estate recently. It's really actually got ushered in by the Jobs Act passed back in 2016. It's really become pretty popular. We've seen lots of these platforms pop up like Yield Street, like Fundrise is a very popular one, Equity Multiple. Um, you really get to choose your investment based on your goals. Um, most of the due diligence is like shown on the website that they share with you a lot of the deal facts there. Some of them are, uh, you know, you do have requirements around net worth. Um, but the other thing is that what's nice about these is they're much more lower uh, investment amounts. So you can start with like, say like a like $5,000. So if you don't have like a hundred thousand to invest in a syndication um, or, you know, even higher amounts to invest in larger deals um, like direct property ownership, you know, this is a great way to get access to real estate. Um, sometimes you do have to be an accredited investor. I'll go over what the requirements are for that. Sometimes you don't. Um, there's a lot of deals that you can get into where it's structured as like a REIT. Uh, like like where Alana said, it's just shares of that particular company and you don't have to be a, an accredited investor. So let's go over what is an accredited investor. So basically your total net worth has to be north of a million dollars. That's not counting your primary residence. Or if you don't have that million dollar net worth, you could just have the high earnings, right? That's $200,000 of earnings per year for the last two years, or if 300,000 if you're married and have a spouse. Um, the solo 401k does not, Just this is really important. Your solo 401k doesn't have to be at a million for you to invest in these deals. So it, they count your total net worth, right? So if you have other properties outside of the solo 401k or other retirement accounts, um, all of that counts toward your total net worth. The only thing that doesn't is just your primary residence. Um, and also, you know, because you're the trustee of your solo 401k, 
as long as you meet those requirements, you can use your solo 401k funds to invest in those deals through these crowdfunding platforms. Um, you're still considered an accredited investor, even though your solo 401k does not have that million dollar amount. So let's go over an example. So Jonas is an accredited investor because of his earnings. His business does really well. He typically makes about $350,000 per year after expenses. He plans to max out his solo 401k every year so he can aggressively grow his retirement nest egg. Um, reducing his taxable income probably is important to him. Um, he wants to get started in his retirement journey, but he only has at this point about $20,000 in his solo 401k. It's called Magic Trust. Because he's a high earner, he's confident he'll be able to grow his funds quickly, but he wants to get and start investing now. He doesn't want to wait until that 20,000 is 100,000. He wants to get those funds working right away. So because he's a accredited investor, uh, he decides to invest some of his funds into Fundrise, which is that crowdfunding platform. So he opens an account under on Fundrise under his name of his trust with Magic Trust. Jonas wires $5,000 from Magic Trust bank account to that income. It's in this case, he's investing in an e-REIT. So it's a, it's a form of a REIT uh, on that Fundrise platform. This time it's the objective is income. He gets those quarterly dividend payments um, paid out to his trust bank account. So once they, the dividends pay out, they can automatically be reinvested or like I said, those funds could also be sent back to his Magic Trust bank account, um, a good way to create cash flow into his retirement account. So basically, similar to the REITs or syndications, you are leveraging other people's efforts, other people's money, um, other people's time. You can really, with these, uh, although, although they are similar, uh, typically a lot of times they're smaller deal sizes, um, you really don't have to do any of the work, right? So there's no rehabbing involved. There's no management. Um, other people are liquidating the assets potentially. And because these are pooled vehicles, like I said, you, you don't have to have a large investment. You could be, you know, just like that example, it could be just 5,000 bucks going into a deal and you get to, you know, get access to the kind of returns that, you know, much larger investors uh, invest in. So, you know, Really, uh, if you're thinking like, hey, I, I wanna purchase like a hotel or a hospital or something large, like a big commercial property, and you don't have the funds, crowdfunding is really a great way to do the, that because obviously you're getting access to those much larger deals um, without having the capital requirements to make that happen. And because you're handing that money over to somebody else to make the results happen, you do wanna do good due diligence, right? You wanna make sure that they have done their homework, that the deal is actually going to be profitable um, because obviously that's the main point of investing. You want to have a good return on your investment. Also, let's talk about another really fun topic, which is mortgage notes, right? So this is uh, ownership in, uh, in debt, basically, right? In a debt instrument. So there are different types of promissory notes available. Some of them are secured, uh, which means that they're backed by a property and some of them are unsecured, which means that, you know, it's harder to get that borrower to repay if they default on that note, right? With a secured note, if the proper, if something happens with that note where the bar, you know, the borrower defaults, you have something to back that up, right? You can go ahead and foreclose on that property. And then your solo 401k trust can take title to that real estate that now becomes part of your investment portfolio. So let's talk about an example. Um, Tim came to us. He was a longtime note investor with a self-directed IRA. He sets up his solo 401k so he can continue investing in notes without any custodial delays or extra fees. I've had a couple calls recently from folks that are utilizing custodians. Because our plan is fully self-directed and you have checkbook control, you actually don't have to check in with us when you want to make an investment. You can just, like we talked about, just wire the funds directly to that deal, to the closing table, take title to that property, or in this case, your trust would be the note holder. Um, let's look at a little example here with Tim. Um, basically, Tim, his trust name in this case, it's called Flipping Great Trust. That's a great name. Um, 
you know, he's going to basically act as a hard money lender for a property flipper, right? So he's going to lend a hundred thousand to that flipper. The interest, uh, $10,000 is due in six months and the property has no, the loan has no monthly payments, right? So he'll, he'll get the interest at the end. Uh, Tim has his attorney write the promissory note. It's secured by the property. The, tr the flipping great trust is the lender. So his actual solo 401k is the lender. And then the flipper is the borrower. So as the trustee, Tim wires the funds to the flipper from the solo 401k trust bank account. Um, at the end of that six months, the $10,000 or excuse me, the full amount plus the 10,000. So whatever, you know, the, the original principal plus the interest goes back to him into his solo 401k uh, bank trust bank account. So not, not back to him personally, but back to his trust bank account. So, and in the case of any kind of default, if anything happens where the note doesn't, you know, work out, Tim can begin, you know, foreclosure proceedings on that flipper's property um, where the solo 401k would then become the owner of that property. So the note is 100,000. The terms are that he gets a $10,000 interest payment in six months. So his projected return is 10% in 6% or 20% annually. Pretty good uh, return there. So he's probably gonna go forward with that deal and obviously wire the funds. Okay, let's talk about farmlands. Farmlands becoming pretty popular. I think people weren't that aware, familiar, and now that there's um, a lot going on with real estate, farmland is another way to get into different kinds of real estate. So not only does the land increase, but farmland has some additional benefits. So we have crop yield, so additional income from crops. And of course it varies depending on the season, type of crop and weather. Lease payments, so investor rents, uh, the land out to a farmer to use. And then I didn't even think of this, but land rentals, like renting space for billboards, solar wind energy and other projects. So there's just so many things that you can do with farmland. Why is this attractive? So the attractive yield, low volatility, equity buildup. It's a hard asset, inflation hedge, that additional seasonal income. It's also stable during economic hard times. Of course, it provides diversification to your portfolio and you can purchase it with crowdfunding, um, just like how Eric was talking about. And of course you can do sole ownership as well. You can even obtain leverage. We always like to talk about passive versus active. So everything we discussed here today, they're all passive. So it's great, it's mailbox money. You're keeping your arm's length distance. You're not working personally on these properties. So it is perfect for your solo 401k. You know, the active real estate deals, this occurs when you're working on the properties. Also, if you're a general partner, that is active. So the solo 401k is never a general partner. Always keep that active income in your business and the passive income in your retirement account. A list of different passive and active. So with the passive income, we have the rental properties the real estate funds, the mortgage notes, the farmlands, and then for the active income, fix and flips. I know some of you are saying to yourself, uh-oh, I've done some fix and flips. You know, the IRS says you can do about one to two a year within your solo 401k. Probably don't wanna call it fix and flips. You know, you're rehabbing it, reselling it. Airbnb is, that's more of an active income. Of course, commissions from real estate deals and any kind of property management those are all considered active income. So our services, like we've discussed, we're your IRS approved document provider. So we are here to make sure your plan is always compliant. And of course, we love giving great educational support and support through your solo 401k journey. Um, just a reminder, those three different ways to get the ongoing support, our network, our website, if you ever need to email us, support at solo401k.com, we respond to emails within 24 hours. I'll leave this up for a second. Here is our contact information. 
If anyone listening now, if you want a one-on-one -on -one free consultation, go to solo401k.com slash consults. Eric or I will be happy to chat over your particular situation. A little recap. So there are so many different ways to invest in real estate. I know when you think about real estate, you might think, I don't have enough funds. But Eric and I went over all different ways that you can start investing with, you know, a thousand dollars. So I hope this gave you guys some ideas. You're not just limited to owning an entire um, property. And mailbox money, of course, is a great way to invest with little effort. Let's do some live questions. Awesome. So the first question I've got here comes from Stan. He says, Crowd Street has a special accreditation requirements that are different for trusts than for individual investors. In a case of a trust, there has to be more than 5 million in total assets. I do not qualify. How do I navigate this? Okay, perfect. So let's go over um, a few things here. So um, typical subscription documents for a fund or syndication will have, you know, several check boxes to verify. Um, so it's based on an individual's net worth. Um, the entity having, you know, $5 million in assets, entity in which all owners are accredited. So in this case, you know, you can try to select an option for a business where all owners are accredited uh, and still list the 401k as a trust. So you may need to explain to the investor sponsor, you know, this is not a family trust or a living trust, but re rather, you know, a retirement trust. Um, of course, another way to do this is having, you know, a special purpose LLC. Um, so that may work. And um, so there are different ways to navigate it. Um, we, we're here, we can set up a special purpose LLC if you need help with that. Um, so the paperwork could be a little odd, but, um, Hopefully that can help. So for the next question comes from Tom. For an Airbnb that my trust owns in a corporation, can the trust be an LP in this investment? Okay, good question, Tom. Um, I think you're saying your trust, like maybe your family trust, um, maybe add a little clarity there for me, but I think you're saying that your family trust owns a corporation that owns an Airbnb. And you're saying, can your solo 401k trust be a limited partner in this investment? Um, most likely, you would. That's something you would definitely want to talk to some kind of uh, you know legal counsel or CPA about. Um, anytime that you're mixing personal investments. Even if it is a trust, um, you want to just be careful because you're you're basically investing with yourself in a deal. So um, you know, that could be considered a prohibited transaction. There are some real specifics that you want to make sure that you follow with that. So I would definitely check in with legal counsel about that if you have one. If you don't have a legal counsel that you that knows about the solo 401k, we do have a list of uh, attorney recommendations on our knowledge base. Um, maybe we could post that in the chat for you. Um, but yeah, that's something for sure. When you're dealing with your own your own business and you're investing into it, you definitely want to check in with legal counsel for sure. And also, Tom, if you're here, let us know. Um, you know, is the Airbnb is it in a family trust? Because I also I've I think there is a way also to have an Airbnb within your solo 401k, but you do have to set up some kind of corporation and your solo 401k has to have shares in that. So there is something there. Um, but like how Eric said, this is definitely something to strategize with your attorney, your CPA, because it is a little complicated. So definitely um, double check that question with them who helps you with all your taxes. Perfect. Then we got a question from G. Can Roth solo 401k funds be used in the same way for all of these investment types? Yeah, great question, G. If you can use your traditional funds within your 401k to invest in 
any investments such as syndications and REITs, you can absolutely use your Roth 401k funds. So the answer is yes. If it's in your 401k, you have that flexibility. You can use your traditional funds, your Roth 401k funds. If your spouse is on your plan, your spouse can use their funds as well. So yes, G. So good question. The next question comes from Charlie. Do you need to be an accredited investor? So yeah, it just depends on the deal, Charlie. Um, good question. So yeah, typically with a syndication, yes. Um, with the REIT, usually no, especially if it's a publicly traded REIT that you could find on the open markets. Um, sometimes it, sometimes you do. Um, but and then for sure, you want to double check with the crowdfunding. Some of the platforms are only for accredited investors, so that would be accredited status. Um, some of them are open to all investors, right? So just be sure to check what the deal is that you're getting into, whether you need that requirement met or you don't, right? Um, and I see you have a follow-up question. He has a follow-up that says, can my solo 401k count toward the $1 million of net worth requirement? I think it can, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it can. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so you, you know, any of your assets, the only thing that doesn't count is just your personal residence. Um, outside of that, like if you own other investment properties, you know, if you own other retirement accounts, and also that it counts you and your spouse, right? So if you're married and you ha your spouse has other retirement accounts, that would count as well. Great question, Charlie. And also, you know, about the accredited investor deals, I think a lot of deals um, also will take some non-accredited investors. So they have a certain amount of accredited, some non-accredited. So if you're not accredited, you know, there's still some options. You may be able to um, look into a deal. So definitely do your due diligence. We talk about that a lot. It's really important. This being self-directed, you're finding your investments. So look into them. And I know we talked about, let's, I want to share, um, you know, the different places to find like our attorney resource list. So you guys know where to get that. So bear with me. And Charlie also asked over there in the comments, will the replay be available? Yes. The replays are all available on our network. Um, so if you go to the network, you can find the replay to this webinar. The past one two weeks ago that we did talking about direct real estate ownership and also buying rental properties with leverage uh, as well as utilizing that participant loan to buy real estate outside of your solo 401k so you can go there and find all of those different trainings we also have a bunch of other past trainings that are super helpful um, so that network as well as uh, obviously where alana is showing us, us here with the knowledge base it's pretty awesome yeah, it's always important to have a good team, you know. So if you need a good attorney, definitely check out our list. John Heyer is one of the smartest people I've ever spoken to. So if anyone needs some good advice, you know, lean on those supports. Of course, it's going to cost you some money, but it's going to ultimately save you money. Absolutely worth it. And if anyone needs a good CPA, that's where you'll, you know, type it in. You'll find our, you know, solo 401k literate CPAs. And I just want to show you, because we've talked about the network a lot, solo401k.net. I want to show you where um, our previous and where this um, webinar will be located. Oh, I think it went away. Give me one second. So this is our network. So if you just go to events, and click on past, you'll find all the events that we were just talking about. So there's the invest in your, invest your retirement funds in real estate. That was the one we did two weeks ago. Roles and Responsibilities, another great one. So this is a great resource. Check out all of our other events.
think Perfect. we have, we ha yeah, we had another question come in from Olga. She says to be the accredited investor, what is the requirement for a married couple? Is it 1 million total for the couple is sufficient? So yeah, 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 it is. Yeah. So it's either it's, it's 200,000, um, as you, as an individual of income, uh, or 300,000 as you and your spouse, but then for the net worth, it's actually, it's jointly. So it's either you by yourself have a million or you and your spouse together have a million dollars in total net worth. Again, that does exclude your personal residence, right? So yeah, so it's just that million dollars. As long as you guys jointly are over that, you're, uh, you're accredited. Yeah. Thank you for the clarification, Olga and Eric. And looks like Tom had a, uh, he's clarifying. He's saying my investment in my, is my solo for, um, is my solo 401k trust. Can it be a limited partner in a corporation that owns the Airbnb? So I think that what you're saying is kind of, um, you know, forming that C corp and your trust having certain shares. So it's complex, but I think that's the way around having an Airbnb within your 401k. So, so Tom, definitely reach out to, if you don't have someone that's giving you guidance, you definitely want to reach out. But I, I think that is okay if you have that C corp and then you have shares, but like I said, double check. We'll give you guys a few more minutes for some questions. We're gonna start a new mini webinar series all about contributions. So it's gonna be like a four or five parter. We're gonna talk all about employee, employer, voluntary after tax, mega backdoor Roth. So that's what's coming up in the next few weeks. So that's very exciting. Always, if you have any ideas, Anything you guys want to learn, let us know. Shoot us an email, post it in our network. We're happy to put something together. We love to talk about this stuff. So we want to hear about what you want to see. So we have a question from Stan, if time permits and no other questions. Can you comment on the special purpose LLC benefits and what is involved? Sure. Yeah. So this, that's a good question, Stan. Um, yeah, typically, so right with your solo 401k trust, you can invest directly. Like we talked about in some of the examples today, you could take title to real estate or, you know, you could sign your subscription documents and have your solo 401k trust be the investor. Uh, right. Uh, but also we can form you what's called a special purpose LLC. Some of our uh, clients like to form these if they're going to invest in direct rental properties, or if they're, even if they're doing, uh, you know, syndications or other things, it's really just an additional layer of asset protection for you. I will say your solo 401k is pretty, it's a pretty asset protected vehicle in general. Um, but that LLC protection adds an additional layer of protection for you. Um, just to, just to say also that's the LLC is not a business, right? So this is just, that's why we call it a special purpose LLC. It's just really for that asset protection. The LLC doesn't file any kind of tax return. Um, again, it's not a business. It's really for the purposes of uh, protecting you from liability. Limited. That's why it's a limited liability company. Um, so it's just one extra step. So basically, funds can have. You can have funds in that LLC by having a, again a bank account in the name of that LLC. So funds would come from your trust checking account and move to that LLC bank account. And then now that LLC can take title to real estate, that LLC can sign, you know, can be the, you know, the one that owns the subscription to the syndication. Um, so an extra step, we can do that for you uh, for just a small flat additional fee. Yeah, that was a great answer. Great question. Also, sometimes the LLC makes it a little easier investing sometimes in deals because maybe, you know, a syndication or, you know, a certain kind of deal that you're doing is not that familiar with trusts. So the ease is there. Sometimes it used to be more important, you know, many years ago, you actually couldn't even open up, I don't think, a crypto exchange in the name of a trust. So that LLC does provide some kind of ease. 
So not only that layer of protection, but we also have that ease on investments because people are just more you know, familiar. They see LLC, okay, they've seen that before. They see a trust name, they're like, hmm. So, so it just really depends. And yeah, we would be more than happy to form that for you. Yeah, and I would just add to the, um, we do also have the self-directed IRA. So if you don't qualify for the solo 401k, that structure has an LLC automatically included in it. The solo 401k is always, you know, you can add the LLC, it's not required, but definitely like Alana said, you know, might be uh, recommended, might be a good additional structure to have inside your solo. Great, and then Charlie wants us to walk through solo401k.net. Yeah, we'll take you through, I'm sure we'll have some time. So um, we'll see if any other questions pop up here. And if not, we will um, show you around. Perfect, then G had a question. Previously, you did not need to report solo K, K1s on your return. Now there is a new question asking if the participant is a re retirement account. Do these now need to be reported? Um, shouldn't need to be because everything is tax deferred. Um, you know, the only requirement for your solo 401k is form 5500 easy, which we help you with. And that's when all of everything in your solo 401k is at $250,000 or more. So, um, if G, if you can let us know where you've seen this, we'll be happy to take a look and dive in. But, um, we are unfamiliar with hearing any of that. So, but thank you for bringing that up. Oh, and so uh, G says it is on the form where you enter the K-1. It asks for a specific box for participant is checked. Hmm. Not that familiar. Yeah. Um, we'll have to get back to you on that one, G. From Robert. Um can a special purpose LLC have different assets or can it be an umbrella for multiple uh, investments? Yeah, great question, Robert. Um, yes, it can have multiple investments under that same special purpose LLC. Um, that comes down to really like a risk tolerance question. Some of our clients, when they get to a couple of properties or a couple of deals in one LLC, they might have us form another special purpose LLC. So. Just keep in mind under your solo 401k trust, you can have as many uh, LLCs as you want to. Um, so just think of that trust as like a, the umbrella. Underneath you can have multiple LLCs, multiple investments. Obviously you could have all of your investments under one LLC or you could have no LLC. So you could have, just have everything in the name of your solo 401k trust. But yeah, great question. Um, you can own multiple investments for sure. Yeah, really, really good question. And then G, you're gonna email us. So you know our email is support at solo401k.com. And anyone else that has questions, maybe you were shy or you think of a question later today, always shoot us an email. Once again, it's support at solo401k.com or you can post it in our network. So now that we have some time, let's go through the network a little bit. So here is the network. This is where right in the, the feed here is where you can post questions. So actually you can go up to this little plus sign, post questions. You can share what's on your mind. So people post questions and then you see, you know, I'm in here um, answering them. We have some of our clients are in here answering questions. We try to direct you to the right webinar if your question, you know, pertains to that. So um, it's a great place to post questions. You know, 
If you have a question about Robinhood brokerage, um, it's nice to have input from other people that have been using their 401k. People like to post articles here. So we have a good time. You know, you're connecting with your community. You're like-minded investors. So you can scroll on. So then this is probably um, where you'll get the most, you know, educational tools is going to be in the event section. I know I took you through that a few minutes ago, but this is where you're going to find all that education and our past webinars. So I think this is the resource you're looking for. You know, you could also message us directly here as well if you don't want to email. And then of course, you know, our best resources are also located in our knowledge base. Type in any keyword. You know, maybe you need some information on funding. So we've have we probably have thousands and thousands of different articles and guides here. And of course, our website is another great place to get resources. So if you haven't played on our website, you're missing out here as well. <laughs> so you'll find, you know, um, all kinds of information on contributions, you know, reporting. There's our calculators. Everyone loves that contribution calculator. It's a great start to figure out what your contributions might be. And then also this, you can hit the network and the knowledge base from here. So if you don't remember the different websites, just come here, solo401k.com and you could find everything. We also have some great articles as well. You know, we talked about UDFI a little bit in this presentation. So if you want some further information, click in UDFI. And we have even more resources. So glad you asked, you know, we've spent lots of hours to do this stuff for you guys. So please utilize it. So it looks like we're done with the questions. Thank you everyone for participating. Eric, it's great to have you on here as well. It's always fun to have a buddy. Um, yeah. Anything else you wanna add? No, yeah, it's been awesome. A lot of great questions, you guys. Um, it's been super, super fun. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. Uh, yeah, like Alana said, just let us know if there's other topics you guys want us to explore. Um, we're happy to hear your feedback because we're doing these for you guys to educate you so you can get the most out of your retirement dollars. You can grow your nest egg. Um, so yeah, we're excited. It's definitely real estate, though, is one of those asset classes that it's you know, it's been around for so long, but I think most people just don't have any idea how much they can actually do within their retirement account. So it's pretty exciting. And there's a lot of different deal structures. So there's a size of deal to fit any amount of money, right? So we went, we went over today, some deals that are smaller, but as you grow your nest egg, you can get into bigger and bigger deals. Um, and obviously everybody's looking for those awesome returns, which real estate typically does have great returns. That was a perfect summary, Eric. So thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us. We'll see you next week. Have a great day. Have a great day, guys. Take care.